one of the driving test manoeuvres is to pull over on the right hand side of the road, reverse back two car lengths and then move away again. If you are practicing without a driving instructor, make sure you have insurance. Collingwood and Marmalade offer specialist learner insurance, which is great as you can use a friend or family member's car without affecting their policy. Use the links in the description to get a quote and using the link to Collingwood will save you up to 20 pounds off your first policy. If you want normal car insurance, try out the link in the description to Confused. They are excellent at finding you the cheapest price. So back to this maneuver. Where you should not pull over on the right is the same as where you should not pull over on the left. So avoid bus stops, blocking driveways, and try and keep at least 10 meters from junctions. I also recommend you don't pull up before a car because you won't be able to see past it when you come to move away. If there is a suitable place on the right, but loads of oncoming cars, be confident enough to put your right signal on and wait for the traffic to clear. You may fail your driving test if you were to continually drive past many safe places. You won't fail if you were to drive past a few, but if your examiner thinks that you're not confident enough to wait for oncoming cars, you may fail. Make sure you wait far enough back from where you want to stop so you have enough space to line up with the curb after crossing over. Normally this is around four to five car lengths back if you want to play it safe. If you were to stop only a car length back from your space, you won't have enough room to line up with the curb and would have to hope there was another suitable space after the one you originally chose. Once it's safe, check your center and right mirror and then move over to park in line with the curb like so. Judging how close you are to the curb can be quite challenging because you're not used to parking on the right side, but don't try and be a precision driver and get one centimeter from the curb. As long as you're closer than half a meter, you'll pass the driving test. I recommend you try and keep around about a drain's width from the curb. That way, if you're slightly further, you'll be okay. And if you get a bit closer, you won't hit the curb. With the car stopped on the right-hand side of the road, make a note of where the curb lines up with the bottom of the window. You can use this point as a reference when pulling over. Keep the curb to the right of this point so you don't hit the curb, but try and keep the curb somewhere near this point so you know you are close. During all of your maneuvers, it's very important that you notice people before they get to you and give way to them if you're getting in their way. So make sure you're looking around often enough that you'll notice someone before they sneak up on you. If, however, you're not affecting their speed and position, there's no need for you to wait. In this example, the car's coming up from behind or on the other side of the road, so you're not affecting them. You don't need to wait. And in this example, the oncoming cars are already moved over, so you don't need to wait for them either, unless you think they're trying to park in the space that you're trying to reverse in behind you. I recommend lowering your curbside mirror to help you see the curb. Try keeping around about a drain's width. A little bit less is okay, a little bit more is okay, but make sure you don't hit the curb. Most people get confused about which way to steer when they're reversing. Here are the two main reasons why. When you are reversing, if you turn the wheel this way, the front of the car will go in the opposite direction. But the key is not to think about the front of your car when reversing. If you look at it again, you can see the rear of the car goes the same way as you steer. The other mistake people make is thinking left and right when they're steering. And the trouble with thinking left and right is when you're facing this way, left is this way. But if you're facing backwards, left is the other way. And therefore, as you're reversing, you're looking both forwards and backwards. And if you're thinking left or right, you're going to get confused. Instead of thinking left or right, just think towards the curb or away from the curb. It doesn't matter if you're going forwards or backwards. If you steer towards the curb going forwards, the front of your car goes towards the curb. If you steer towards the curb going backwards, the rear of your car goes towards the curb. Easy. So to help you steer the correct way, don't think left or right and focus on the rear of the car when you're going backwards and the front of your car when you're going forwards. Preferably when you're focusing on the rear of the car, focus on your mirror because that way you can see where you are and you're still looking backwards. I would just like to point out that although you should focus on the rear of the car when you're going backwards, be careful as the front of the car will move around. So keep an eye on it just to make sure you're not gonna hit anything. In this demonstration, you can see that if I steer away from the curb, my car will go away from the curb. And if I steer towards the curb, the car will go towards the curb. If I wanna make the car straight, I'll steer in the opposite direction to where I'm currently heading. And as I'm heading towards the curb, that means I need to steer away from the curb. I'll do that now. Steering away from the curb until the car 
looks like it's no longer heading towards the curb. When the car looks straight, which it does about here, then I'll straighten the wheels so I stay straight and now I can come back in a straight line. The only trouble is I look a little bit too far from the curb. So if I want to make the car closer to the curb, I'm going to steer towards the curb until I'm angled towards the curb slightly like I am now. And I won't leave the steering on as my angle will get increasingly steep, which will make it harder for me to avoid hitting the curb. So at this small angle, I'm going to straighten the wheel and come back at this very, very small angle towards the curb until I feel I'm close enough. So it might take a little bit of time, just gradually come back. And when I'm starting to feel close enough to the curb like I am now, to counteract the fact I'm going towards the curb, I'll steer away from the curb to take my angle off. Come back slightly to take the angle off, and when I feel straight, I'll straighten the wheels, and I can come back in a straight line again. If you get too close to the curb, it's hard to get further away from it because the front of the car will swing towards the curb when you try and make the back of the car go away from the curb. A way around this is just to pull forwards, and as you pull forwards, get further from the curb again, and then you can reverse back, hopefully avoiding the curb this time. If you've left it too late and haven't corrected in time, and you end up feeling like you're going to hit the curb like I am around about now, stop don't continue. Put it in first gear and pull forward slightly to increase your gap and when you have a decent gap then put it in reverse again and this time try to steer away from the curb before you get too close. You are allowed to make corrections on the driving test. It is not a fail unless you correct too many times. If during any of your maneuvers you have dipped your wing mirror to help you see where you're going, it's very important to return it back to its normal position before you continue so you can see what's coming up behind. When moving away, remember to give way to cars that are oncoming as well as cars that are behind you. Check your left blind spot instead of your right blind spot and if you feel you need to signal, use your left signal. When moving away, try to get back to the correct side of the road as soon as possible. Avoid staying on the wrong side of the road longer than needed. If you're parked behind a car, going backwards a bit, like I am now, will improve your view of what's coming ahead. It's actually the reason why they get you to reverse back to car lengths during this manoeuvre, so you can see further. However, if someone has pulled up behind you and it's impossible to go backwards and you really can't see what's coming, your examiner, who will have a better view as they're sitting on the left side of the car, will help you move out by telling you if someone's coming. However, when you move back to car lengths, which is around about this far, you still can't really see who's coming. So to get around that, steer all the way to the left, check your left blind spot, make sure no one's coming behind, and slowly move forwards to warn people that you're coming out. That way they can see you and slow down if you can't see them. When you can see it's clear like I can now, get going if it's still safe from behind and carry on up the road. If someone pulls up behind you before you've had a chance to reverse, the manoeuvre will be cancelled and you'll have to do another manoeuvre later in the test. If there is a car in front of you, your examiner will help you move away by telling you if someone's coming. However, if you can't reverse because there's someone behind you and there's no one in the passenger seat to help you know if anyone's coming, what do you do? This is actually the main reason why I advise against pulling up on the wrong side of the road, because you can't see what's coming. And if you haven't got a passenger to help you, that can leave you in a bit of a pickle. So I'll show you what I would do in this situation. I'd put it in first gear, turn the wheel all the way to the left, make sure no one's coming from behind in my blind spot, and very, very slowly edge out. And if I see anyone coming from behind or in front, I will stop. There's actually someone coming up behind now, so I'm going to stop. Nope, they've parked. So I'll continue and I'll gradually pull out until I can see. Hopefully, if anyone's coming now, they're going to have slowed down for me because they can see my nose slowly moving out. Now I can see. I'll check behind again. Looks good. And I'll get going up the road. 
Well, that's all for this one. Like if you like it, subscribe to get my future videos. Subscribing to the channel really helps and allows me to put more time into making better quality content. See you next time.